Hey guys, it's Jezza here and welcome back to a new video on uh, FIFA 14 and today I'm not actually going to be uh, talking about or actually showing Ultimate Team or a tutorial or a career mode video. Today is going to be a little bit different. I am going to discuss the Arsenal versus Liverpool game later on today and the reason why I'm doing this is because I kind of just feel like talking about the game today. I think I really do want to bring more discussion type videos to my channel, so maybe discussing players, um, discussing, uh, so maybe comparing certain players and, and giving my final verdict on which one I prefer. Um, games coming up like Arsenal versus Liverpool, you know, team analysis. Um, type videos and yeah, so I really want to do more discussion type videos discussing games that are about to happen and giving my thoughts on them So if you guys do like the idea of that and if you guys do enjoy this video as well Tell me in the comment section below and uh, I will definitely do more of these Maybe one a week or one every two weeks or one every three weeks depending on how popular and uh, How much you guys do enjoy it So if you do enjoy it leave a like down below and tell me why you enjoy it and if you do want me to, to do more but for, without further ado let's go on and talk about Arsenal versus Liverpool today it's gonna be a very close game in my opinion these two teams are are on par with quality of players you know I don't think either of them have a particularly uh, great squad depth I think that their first teams are amazing but then if you look at their sub bench they don't really have the same squad depth that Man City or Chelsea have so that is why I don't think either of them are gonna win the league this season, I believe Chelsea or Man City are going to win the league. Um, but Arsenal versus Liverpool is very close to call. But I'm going to kind of give the positives of both Liverpool and Arsenal and also the negatives. And then give my final verdict on who I think is going to win the league. And in the background of this video, of this video, you will see um, me kind of... It's not actually me playing FIFA, but it is Arsenal versus Liverpool gameplay. And I've kind of gone on the game and switched sides, so I'm not actually playing. So it's kind of the computer versus the computer. And uh, just to see who would win, it's kind of a bit of an interesting thing that you, that you guys can watch while listening to me. So the positives for Arsenal going into this game is that they are currently first placed in the league. And this will be a massive confidence booster. I know that they have recently lost to Chelsea and Borussia Dortmund. But that wasn't in the league, and I don't think that Ozil was playing against Chelsea either. So um, that's another massive point. They have Ozil in their team, and when Ozil seems to be playing in that Arsenal team, it seems to give a lift to every single other Arsenal player, and uh, they seem to perform so much better when they know that they've got a world-class player in their team, much like with uh, Liverpool and Steven Gerrard. When, when Gerrard plays in that team, you know, the leadership um, quality just comes out, and every other player just seems to play so much better. And with Ozil, you know, he is their playmaker and he has been really crucial to a lot of their goals this season. So I think as he's on fire at the moment, he's really going to cause that Liverpool defence a hard time, especially as Liverpool defence, um, especially as the Liverpool team are currently playing a 3-5-2 formation. You know, they have only three defenders and they have their fullbacks bombing up the, up the wings the whole time. Um, so this could really be costly as Arsenal might try and get them on the counter attack. Um, so, yeah, I do believe that Arsenal have a really good chance here to, to nick um, all three points here. If Ozil plays very well, you know, it does kind of rely on Ozil playing well and matching Steven Gerrard's performance or uh, Lucas Leiva's performance to get behind those central defensive midfielders and really hurt Liverpool. Also, Arsenal are playing at home. Now, this is massive. You know, when you've got two really close teams like this, the crowd can make a massive difference in confidence. Um, the only problem that I foresee with this is that Arsenal's crowd don't tend to be the most forgiving. I think if the team start playing badly and Liverpool really do dominate and their, their formation of late has been a 3-5-2 formation and that that formation is very dominant. It's, it's a possession-filled um, filled formation and I know that Arsenal like to play the possession game but 3-5-2 it's going to be very difficult to get the ball off Liverpool but if they do manage to, to play some exciting football then the Arsenal fans will be fully behind their team and you know they will uh, hopefully for them uh, go on and score score some goals and when, they, when the first goal goes in for Arsenal if it does the crowd will be boosted even more and they could go on to score two or three um, so yeah that's a massive factor them being at home also they have got 
got the star performer, I believe, of their season so far, which is Aaron Ramsey, playing at the top of his game. Aaron Ramsey, I believe he's actually arguably the Premier League's best player of the season so far. Everything that he's done has worked, and he has he's come out in interviews and he said, you know, I've been trying to get in these positions for, for years, but it hasn't really come off. And I think the experience um, that he's learned, not the experience, I, th I think the, uh, the knowledge that he's learned from the players around him, like Santi Gazzola and Artessa and these other midfielders, has really progressed his game massively. And I think he's going to be a, a big, big player for Arsenal this season. Hopefully he doesn't decline. You know, a lot of youngsters start to decline uh, as the season wears on. Uh, they, they can't usually handle it, but hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he continues and puts in a good shift today against Liverpool. And uh, another good positive, I guess, is that Giroud is playing very well. Um, but then that does come with a double, uh, a, 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 a negative, I guess, because Giroud is their only main striker. They've got Nicholas Bentner, who is no way near Arsenal quality. So they have Giroud, who is playing very well. And if he doesn't get injured, then he could be great for the season. But against Liverpool, um, I think he will be vital. You know, he's a strong, tall uh, defender, uh, not a defender, attacker. Sorry, yeah, attacker. Who will? Um, yeah, he, he'll he'll definitely hurt hurt Liverpool. Um, so those are the positives for Arsenal. I think I think the the main def uh, negatives are that Flamini is injured. Now Flamini is a massive player for Arsenal. He really is vital. He w like I think he is. I I really think that him. I think that he is a more important signing in many ways than the Urzel signing, or at least on par, because the the contribution that Flamini has put into every Arsenal game, no one's actually noticed it, but he has dominated. He has really, really dominated the, the, the midfielder, the midfield when uh, when Arsenal have been playing against other teams, and I really think he is a fundamental asset to to Arsenal this season, and he's he's a main reason. He's one of the main reasons why Arsenal have won nine out of their ten games because he does all of the dirty work that no one really notices, and then Özil goes and do, does all the fancy work that everyone notices, and uh, he gets a lot of credit. Um, but Flamini really hasn't been doing. Uh, you know, Flamini has contributed a lot to Arsenal but unfortunately today he is injured so because he's been injured recently over the past few games Arsenal haven't been playing that great at all and it's kind of I don't think it's um you know I I don't think that's that's I, I think that's that's uh, that's mainly because of Flamini being injured I think that he has been taken out you know without him in the team their defense Arsenal's defense has been scrutinized by so many attackers from other teams like Borussia Dortmund and uh, Chelsea and those teams Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea I believe are of the same similar quality to Liverpool and especially as Liverpool have Sturridge and Suarez without Flamini in that midfield it could be very very difficult for Arsenal to play and uh, stop Liverpool from scoring goals because Sturridge and Suarez up front just seems to be a perfect partnership. Um, so now onto another negative with Arsenal, their lack of depth in the squad, which I have already gone over. Their defensive problems, yes, I've already said that. They don't really have a two... I, I don't think their, their defence is too good without Flamini sitting there in front of the defence. I think uh, that, that Koscielny and Mertesacker don't do too well together. Um, some people really do disagree. Some people say that Mertesacker and Koscielny are one of the best partnership defense uh, defenses in, in the league, but I, I strongly disagree. When I've seen them together without Fab Flamini, they have been all over the place, and they've really conceded some very sloppy goals. So, so yeah, and I believe those are really all the... They're really all the negatives. Also, the only minor negative that you could really say is that Arsenal haven't really played against any top team so far in the Premier League, which is, I think, why they're top of the league, because they haven't really competed with teams in the top six. I mean, Liverpool, Liverpool have played Man United, and they beat Man United, so they are, they've kind of proved to everyone that they mean business. Um, so yeah, let's move on to Liverpool now. The positives for Liverpool are that Suarez and Sturridge are possibly the best partnership in the Premier League as of now. They are just on fire. Those guys, they they pass together so well. They seem to have really good chemistry with each other, you know. They they know exactly where the other guy is, they, where their, their partner is. They know... Uh, they 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 seem to be telepathic in many ways, um, and they just score and assist each other all the time. 
Um, so I believe that is really going to hurt our Arsenal, especially as they don't have Flamini sitting in there in that central defensive midfield role. That is going to be very, very tough. And also Liverpool have a very solid defence. They have a 3-5-2 formation. Um, but in that midfielder, in, in that midfield, they have Cisco who's a really fast left wing back. And they also have Johnson, who is equally as fast. And they can easily come back to cover and make that defence a five-man defence, which is going to be very hard for Arsenal to break down. And uh, when Liverpool do get the ball back, they will be on the counter-attack. And they will have five in midfield and two up top. And it's, it's actually a, it's a formation that really works well with Liverpool because Cisco and Johnson are pretty much built for that for that position, the wing back position. You know, they love to attack. They also love to defend. And that gets the best out of those two players. Um, also, one thing with the Liverpool is that they are they have a really good spirit. I guess they have a really great spirit in the camp at the moment. They uh, they they're full of confidence and they seem to be going into every game without fear. And they seem to be really trying to get results. Um, and they they are they are converting a lot of chances. They're creating a lot of chances. Steven Gerrard has been a massive. Uh, uh, um, a massive, a massive part of this because he's he's assisted a lot of the goals and um, he, he sets up a lot of plays. Uh, he's he's their main playmaker, I guess. But Lucas Leiva has also done really well, and Gerard and Lucas Leiva in that central defensive midfield role, they've both done very well at tackling, breaking up play, and uh, giving the ball back to, to players like Jordan Henderson and these other players to, to start the attack going. But a negative of Liverpool is just that Jordan Henderson. I don't believe is Liverpool quality yet. I think he will be, but at the moment, they are really missing Coutinho. And when he comes back, then they might be title contending team, a, a title contending team. But without Coutinho, Henderson just doesn't, he, he doesn't do it for me. He doesn't, he, he's, he seems to be fairly sloppy at times. And I think um, Ars Arsenal will punish that sloppiness tomorrow if he doesn't play well. Um, so yeah, they do have a lack of creativity in that midfield, in that midfield role there. And also, obviously, Liverpool are playing away, so you can expect a little bit of an anxiety to to go and and nerves to to crop up with the Liverpool players, which could be of huge detriment to them. But overall, guys, I'm going to say that Liverpool are going to go into this game with the best partnership in the league of strikers, and uh, they are going to have a great, they are going to have a game plan for this game. Um, which I believe will really work out well, and they are going. I, I the thing is, if if Arsenal had Flamini, I think Arsenal would have won, would win. But because they don't have Flamini, I think Liverpool are going to win this one, two one. And I believe that Suarez is going to get the first goal, Sturridge will get the second, and Giroud will get a uh, a goal later on in, in the game, which which won't really mean anything. So yeah, guys, that is my prediction for, for today's game. If you guys have any uh, opinions that you want to share, feel free to put them in the comments. And yeah, guys, I look forward to reading that. Leave a like as well. Subscribe to my channel, and I will have a tutorial out tomorrow. So look forward to that. Um, and I hope you guys all enjoy the Arsenal-Liverpool game today. So yeah, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.